introduce Julian Breslow. Julian has his master's in social work and his PhD in English literature. Julian has spent 30 years working with special needs children from infancy to the age of 22. While in private practice, he has specialized in adults with physical challenges and families affected by substance abuse. Julian also works with our patients at the uh, peripheral neuropathy clinic as well. Please welcome Julian. Basically, my point is going to be from the social work standpoint, but also from the team standpoint, why you need to have a team. And part of the reason that you need to have a team in dealing with peripheral neuropathy is, first of all, you are part of the team because it's unique to every individual. And I'll get into that a little bit later as to how you can help best help be part of that team. Second of all, it can be chronic, in which case it's going to place demands on you for an extended period of time. Nobody's ever complained before that they can't hear me. All right. Are we okay now? Yes. Okay. Um, also, it, as uh, do we have family members in the audience too of people who are okay? So you know too that it also affects you or could you as well as the person with the neuropathy. Uh, it also affects just how you function in your daily life and some of the things that you need to be able to do while the doctors are figuring out what is going to get rid of it. And as Liz pointed out, sometimes it's you and the doctors experimenting together. Uh, often, it's you and the doctors experimenting together. Uh, and during the course of that time, you may need to take advantage of community resources. And I'll get into some of the purposes for those resources uh, in a few minutes. But the first thing is to get into the team itself. Oh, wait, this is the picture I got. This is not my picture. This is the, the so I can't take any credit for this. The picture I really wanted to find shows your brain. Uh, and the problem with your brain is that these things that you see here, which is what happens during the course of your life that makes it a vicious circle, and you can start anywhere you like, but let's start with lack of sleep, which leads to change of mood, which leads to reduction of activity, which leads to a change in your energy level, which may lead to a lack of sleep. And so this continues on. And guess who's benefiting the most from this is your pain. The same thing happens, and we'll get into that a little bit later, when you talk about the stress response. The stress response was very effective when we were worried about saber-toothed tigers. I used to drive through Northbrook and I never had that concern. <laughs> and unfortunately now the stress response is the brain's way of responding to pain regardless of whether the pain is a kid who every time you're on the phone is going to pull at your leg or it's a pain that you really need to respond to. So we'll get back to that but the issue is is that if we don't talk to our brains they are going to keep on going through the same cycle over and over again, and it's not effective. I mean, it's effective when you're getting away from the saber-toothed tiger or you're realizing that your hand is on a hot skillet. It's not effective when there is no saber-toothed tiger. It's left and you're still feeling the pain. And that's part of the reason why we have a multidisciplinary team. Um, because it's not just, as you heard, it's not going to be just the doctor who's going to help you to figure out what's going on because he's going to need your help. During the course of your treatment, you're going to, you may need exercises. You may also need a physical therapist to come out or some therapist to come out and do a home safety check so that while you are taking care of yourself, the house is not your enemy. Uh, same thing with driving, same thing with, with numbers of other daily activities where you need to begin to think differently about how you're going to run your day. Uh, the nutritional counseling we'll get into obviously next. Uh, and social work is for two separate things, although they tend to come together because you feel better if the government is helping to pay for things. So that's on the one hand, but you also need to learn how you can 
be the effective defeater of the stress response and how you can deal with your pain in such a way that as one of the books says, learn to manage your pain before it manages you. And as you saw from the uh, cyclical example, part of the problem is, is that the pain is either going to get worse or is going to dominate your life more and therefore get worse if you don't learn how to handle it. That's easier said than done, but I did have sciatica for a while, so I have some information on that. So one of the things, and of course this is what they tell you to do regardless of what your problem is, is that you need to be concerned about your lifestyle. Um, I have a, a couple of patients, in fact I, I, we've considered doing a study of all the people who come in and say my pain is terrible, we ask them how much do you drink and they say well just a couple of drinks a day and we say you're going to have to stop drinking, they never come back to clinic. <laughs> I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> you know, well, it's just like taking alcohol when you're depressed. Alcohol is a depressant. So you're depressed and therefore you want to take alcohol and then you're depressed so you want to take alcohol. The same thing is true with taking alcohol when you're having peripheral neuropathy. The, obviously, the smoking always gets into the top 10 list. But there are also things that you can do in terms of your nutrition, which we'll talk about next, in terms of safety at the home, which I'll talk about in a minute, in terms of appropriate exercise, where here, no pain, no gain is not the mantra. Because your pain is telling you something. I mean, it's telling the brain basically that this nerve doesn't work too well and I'm going to keep on telling you until you figure out what you can do about it. And since you can't do anything about it, I'm going to keep on telling you. But there are things you can do to compensate for where the pain is, but you don't want to feel pain in the process of doing exercise. And up until uh, I learned to deal with my sciatica, I thought exercise was pain. But since going to a physical therapist and realizing that I don't have to spend the rest of my life walking in pain, I am now a true believer in physical therapy. Now part of the behavioral strategies is an effort to be able to avoid the focus as this lady and I were talking about even before uh, the conference started is to avoid the focus on the pain because like that little kid when you're on the phone the little kid is going to keep on pulling at your leg until you get off the phone. If you ask the kid, why are you pulling at my leg, he'll say, because you're on the phone. He doesn't have anything else to say, and neither does your pain if it's need peripheral neuropathy. It's already said what it's needed to say. It's just that the brain does not know how to respond differently until we teach it. Some of the things that you'll want to be able to do, therefore, is to have diversions. Do not reduce, you may have to modify, but do not reduce the things that you enjoy. You may have to modify when you do them. But social interaction, maintaining hobbies, main going to support groups, coming here. And I saw, by the way, on your list outside on the bulletin board, uh, you stole a lot of our wind here because you have a lot of the things going on in the Cancer Wellness Center that are things that you're going to want to get involved in, picking and choosing, in order to be able to deal with the neuropathy until it either goes away or it realizes you're not going to pay attention to it anymore. Some of the things are just very practical, and I'll get into a little of that in the, in the next slide when I get into home safety things. But some of them are very practical in the sense that if you need to learn something new, like we go on, you need to learn about meditation, for example, don't do it when the kids are racing around the house throwing things at each other. You need to, in fact, in one of the books there, they have a sign at the end that you can put on your door that says, I am relaxing by doctor's orders, do not bother me for the next hour. 
I made it 23 hours, but <laughs> uh, it's still valuable. And things, I mean, actually that keep belongings in the same place is just kind of a lead-in to the notion of that you might need somebody, you might need somebody to come out and kind of check around and see what's going on in your house, how things are laid out. As some of you know, if you've, if you've dealt with uh, elderly parents, and my parents just persist on being elderly, my dad's hitting 97, so when you're dealing with elderly parents, you're constantly modifying things. You know, getting rid of the beautiful rugs that anybody over the age of 60 is gonna break his neck on. You know, modifying the bathroom, like we went on this retreat somewhere in Galena and they had a bath, you know those bathtubs on legs that are 18 feet high? My daughter tried to jump out. <laughs> She wasn't 18 inches high at the time, so it was not a good idea. So there are numbers of things, and like I said, especially if your doctor can recommend, or does recommend physical therapy, can also recommend that the physical therapist do a home assessment for you. So that people can go around the house and see, you know, these throw rugs you don't want, the, the Toilet seat needs to be a little higher. You may need a, a stronger grip uh, holding on to things. And one of the things we're gonna get to in a minute is that peripheral neuropathy is different for everybody and you're gonna have to gradually learn how to define yours. And, when, and one of them has to do, as Liz pointed out, with uh, sensory neuropathy, which means you don't know that the bathtub's hot until you see that you've turned bright red, which means that if your neuropathy is sensory, you're going to need beforehand to adjust the heating device on your hot water heater to have a thermometer to be able to check the heat of the water, to wear gloves wh when you're doing washing dishes. Um, some people still wash dishes, you know, I hear. <laughs> to have adequate lighting, um, including a light for your car key, although we'll get into whether you should have a car key or not in a minute, but the <laughs> have light for your car key or for your home key when you're coming in. Um, so, so that you're prepared ahead of time. In fact, one of the things that I skipped there was about being ahead of your pain. A uh, and Liz had pointed that out at one point. A lot of people say, I don't feel any pain, so I'm not gonna take the medication. Then they're in their severe pain, so they take as much medication as possible. The pain has beat them. It's done, I mean, or you're gonna knock yourself out with how many, what dosage of medication you take. Either way, and this is what we'll get into the pain diary. Because once you can do something like a pain diary, you can get a sense of what is my cycle? What is my pattern? And also, what is my neuropathy? So that you become a partner with your doctor. One of the things the doctor is gonna ask you is how do you feel? And it's like when I used to work with, with elementary school kids and I would ask them, do you like your teacher? And I got two answers. She's nice or she's mean. And I said, can you elaborate? And they'd say, well, she's mean. And that was the end of that conversation. That does not help the doctor or the social worker, but that does not help the doctor. What will help is to begin to develop a pain diary Pain diary, they're, they're also, you can probably look online to find different examples, but it's basically the idea of picking three times during the day, writing down things like what you were doing, uh, be sure to write down the time of day, when you took your medication, writing down what are the sensations, be creative. You know, some people say it feels like a glove. Other people say it tingles. Other people say it's like my foot fell asleep. Those are relevant. And even though your spouse may be saying, what are you talking about? Your doctor will be glad to hear it. 
because your doctor will be able to get a better, I was going to say pinpoint, but that's not a good term. Your doctor will be able to get a better sense of what he's really or she is really dealing with. We have a he and a she, so I have to be PC about it. Um, by the way, and this is what I was talking about before in terms of sensory issues, that's why you need, you may need to check your feet and hands every day, especially if this is if this is sensory neuropathy, because you may not be aware. Oh, I cut myself. I wonder when that happened. You may not be aware of that, and you need to be able to take care of that. Or, like what happens to me, I know when the temperature has got under 32 because my knuckles, the skin on my knuckles cracks. Well, I don't really want to have to wait for that to start taking care of myself. Now, this is what we were talking about, about being an informed patient. Informed means, you know, you can go online and, and read about peripheral neuropathy, but you also want to read about you. And reading about you means to keep this journal, to keep a sense of what happened during the day, right be here I am feeling my most intense, what time of the day is it, what was I doing, what was I eating, what had I done before? When did I take my medication? Because a lot of this will allow not just you, but the doctor to determine when to give you the medication and for you to determine, you know, if I really want to write my dissertation, maybe I should do it in the morning when the pain is least intense. So that you can begin, or never mind the dissertation, because that was no fun. But if I really want to do something fun in the morning, or if I really want to do something fun, when am I going to time it? What is the cycle of my pain, and how does it relate to my day, so that I can see a friend for breakfast instead of for lunch? But I do need to see that friend. I had a, uh, a uh, client, in fact, who... Uh, um, eventually needed the pump for diabetes, but her ability for predicting her day was just uncanny. She could look out the window and say, this is how much I should eat, this is how much, this is how much insulin I should take, this is what I need to wear. She had a perfect sense just by looking at the weather report, where the wind was blowing, and what happened when she woke up in the morning, what she needed to do. And that's what we need to be able to do with our neuropathy, is to be able to outsmart it. And also to be able as the top, oh good, this is the right place to have it. To find the balance between, you know, getting rid of the pain by taking medication and between maintaining a quality of life. The other um, journal that you can keep has to do with automatic thoughts. I don't know, have any of you ever been involved in cognitive therapy? I guess you shouldn't tell your name. You can whisper it to your name. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay, because cognitive therapy has to do with what we're going to be talking about next and what we started off with, which is you need to be able to short circuit that stress response. And one of the th the stress response is automatic. You're not going to stop it by just saying, I shouldn't have that. You're going to have to stop it by doing something different so the brain gets another message. Well, what your brain tends to get right now, depending on your family support system or what your parents used to tell you when you were little and got hurt, your brain either tells you, you're a wimp, it's no problem, why are you fetching all the time, or it will go away, or just walk through it, or no pain, no, oh, who knows, there's all sorts of stuff like that. We need to get another voice in there. And that's what cognitive therapy does. But that's also what the chart will do for you. When you begin to feel the pain, when it begins to intensify, you want to write down, what am I feeling physically? Like my father-in-law has still not figured out that if he keeps his legs crossed, he's not going to be a balanced person. Well. We're not talking mentally. That's a different story. But he's not going to be a physically balanced person if he keeps his legs crossed. And we may even have to put a buzzer there. So if, you know, every time he crosses his legs, he'll get a shock or something. But 
Those are the things that you need to know. How is my body feeling? What is the first thought that comes into my head, you wimp? What is my mood or emotion at that time? And we grab, and what thought, what is a counter thought? If my first thought is that this pain is gonna last forever, which, you know, we probably got from, uh, from one of the kvetchy people in our family when we were growing up, if it's raining, it's gonna rain forever, and it's ruined my life. We need another voice. But the only way you're gonna get that other voice, the only way you're gonna get that other voice is by training it. A habit takes 30 to 60 days to develop. We're gonna to have to take 30 to 60 days to develop a new habit. But one of the things that you're gonna to have to, not that you're gonna to have to, but the other things that can help you to deal with this are the things that help to deal, to trigger the relaxation response. The relaxation response is also a natural response in the brain, and it's a natural response that says the tiger has gone away. And we can do that through all sorts of a variety of different approaches. And depending on what works for you, if it works, it's right. There have been no um, clinical trials, trials on acupuncture, one of the things I'll be talking about next. But if it works for you, it works. There have been no clinical trials on massage, on Reiki, on Tai Chi, but if it works for you, it works. Because it's not gonna hurt. But the things that can help are things, for some people, are meditation, progressive relaxation. That worked so well with me that I fell asleep when I got to my knees. You're supposed to work pain all the way up through your body, tension all the way up through your body. You can see how tense I am. I was, I was gone. <laughs> Self-talk so that you have different things to say to yourself. Yes, I am wrapping up. And as I was saying, there are a lot of different complementary medications. You got a whole list of things out here that people are doing right here, including the hypnosis. They also have Tai Chi classes. Now, I do have, whoops, what happened? I did have an indication that I also have a whole list of resources because one of the things that you may also need is to get help from outside uh, places, including the fact that you can, if you need help with buying medication, if you need help with getting assistive devices, all those things are available if you talk to your social worker or just come down to our clinic and we'll have a chat. Um, I think I better go before they <laughs> get the hook.